What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters. You are watching the Car Passion channel and today I'll be teaching you how to replace your valve stem seals the easiest way possible without removing the head. Now I give this job maybe a seven and a half out of 10 difficulty with a five being a timing belt job because you do have to retime the engine but you're diving in a little bit deeper than that job normally entails. You're removing the cams, you're removing the lifters, you're removing the uh, retainers and keepers and valve springs so it requires a little bit more skill, but with uh, paying attention and doing your research and of course the use of this video and the carpassionchannel.com, I have confidence that each and every one of you could do this job if you had to. So let's talk about finding out if you have to do valve stem seals. What are the symptoms of bad valve stem seals? If you go on Google and you search, does my car have bad valve stem seals? One of the number one symptoms is smoking at cold start. Take that with a grain of salt because both of my Miata engines that have needed valve stem seals did not smoke at all at cold start. So just because your car doesn't smoke at cold start doesn't mean you don't need valve stem seals. My prime symptom is after the engine has been in a state of vacuum for a long time, say at least 30 seconds, the car will smoke afterwards. So sitting at a stoplight at idle, or especially going down a hill in gear at least 3,500 RPM or higher, that super high vacuum, you get on the throttle and you blow a huge plume, James Bond smoke screen, it's just not a good situation. So keep in mind that those symptoms could also be caused by bad piston rings, but you can kind of eliminate that possibility by doing a dry and then a wet compression test, comparing the results. The wet test will have higher numbers, but if they're like way higher, like double, then you could have a problem with the rings, but I've already eliminated that at this point, so this video is about valve stem seals. Second thing is let's talk about why it's bad to burn oil in your Miata or any engine in general. Number one, especially for you turbo guys that are on pump gas, oil in the combustion chamber lowers the effective octane of your fuel, which means it's easier for the engine to detonate, which is bad because that breaks your engine and you don't want that. Trust me. Number two is the oil burning inside the engine is gonna leave all kinds of gunk and deposits everywhere and it will start building up over time. So if you're burning oil, it's not something that you just wanna let go for thousands and thousands of miles. So uh, hopefully this video is gonna help you out with that today. Now I had the valve stem seals go bad on my Miata about three and a half years ago. Here's a clip from when that happened. <laughs> I did do a tech article on it, but I've wanted to put it into video form because I think it can be exponentially more helpful to someone that wants to tackle the job themselves, but might be a little bit nervous starting out. Now, if you check out the link below to my website, you will find that tech article as well as links to all the tools and parts that I'm using in this video. So I know some of you guys that keep up with the channel are thinking, hey, uh, your engine only has 1500 miles on it. How could it possibly need valve stem seals already? Well, I used SuperTech valve stem seals in my engine and I should have done some research before I chose those because a lot of people have had bad experiences with SuperTech valve stem seals failing. Some people do have really good luck with them. I thought maybe I'd be one of those people, but I thought wrong. So let's jump into this. The tools that you'll need aside from normal wrenches and sockets include some nylon rope. This will be going inside of your engine, so it's gotta be clean and not all frayed. I actually cut the end of mine and put a lighter on it so it melted the tip and it wouldn't be fraying everywhere inside of the engine. You should be using valve stem seal pliers, but if not, these long needle nose pliers will do. The only thing about these is you have to be careful not to slip while you're trying to pull the seal out because you can scratch the surrounding area and you don't really want to damage anything. I'll have a link to some good valve stem seal pliers down below if you want to check those out. And most importantly, this Nico valve spring compressor. No, the AutoZone rentals will not work in this case. Those things are designed for like Ford big block engines and those heads have bigger springs than Miata coilovers. So they won't fit in our tiny little engines, unfortunately, but this thing is not too expensive. But yeah, this is pretty important and I'll show you how to use it. 
The first step is to remove the valve cover. This is gonna vary a little bit depending on what year your engine is. Mine's a 2001, so I gotta do my LS ignition coils, the VVT hardline, VVT solenoid, and then I can pull the valve cover off. Next up, you'll want to remove the upper timing cover, loosen the tension on the alternator belt, and remove the water pump pulley, and just the top half of this plastic cover that's behind it. Now I can loosen the bolt on the timing belt tensioner and remove the spring. Okay, you can remove the camshafts now. If, when you're breaking the cams loose, don't forget you have to go in a shrinking spiral pattern in phases in order to reduce the risk of bending or breaking your camshaft, which if you do that, it's gonna be a bad time. These caps have to go back on in the same location and facing the same direction that they came off, so it's super important to stay organized here. Uh, yeah, okay, so it turns out on the VVT motor you do have to take the cam gear off to get the cam out That was my bad It's just these three little t25s be careful. They're very easy to strip once the plate comes off You got a 17 millimeter bolt and the cam gear comes off now the lifters are free to come out I've got solid lifters in my engine the uh, early Miata engines had hydraulic lifters the process to take them out is the same once your cams are out, you can just pull them right out. You do want to put the lifters back into the spot that they came out of. The way I'm going to do the seals is I'm just going to take one lifter out, get that valve spring off, do the seal, put it back in. So I'm just going to do one at a time. So after I tackle one seal, I'll put that whole assembly back together and move on to the next one. I'm going to do all four valve stem seals on cylinder number one first. Step one is going to be get cylinder number one at bottom dead center. So do the trick with the uh, extension there all the way down. Next step is to feed as much nylon rope as you can get into the cylinder. You're going to turn the motor back up towards top dead center. Now you're not going to be able to make it all the way to top dead center because your cylinder is full of rope. What you've done now is created a pillow for the valve to push against. You don't want the valve to push against the piston, that is for sure. Another way of doing this is to use a fitting in the spark plug hole so you can hook your compressor up to it and pressurize the cylinder, but not everyone has a compressor so this is kind of like the budget way to do it as usual. Here is our valve spring compressing kit. You're gonna wanna grab your feet first and uh, the main rod. Now the feet and rod can be set up many, many different ways. You need to find locations for the feet to sit that are right above threaded holes because you will need to bolt the feet down in order to use the compressor. All right, so we've got the tool nice and bolted down on both ends. 
got the pull handle and your goal is to get this piece right here lined up with the angle of that valve spring which is down in here and I've already taken one of the springs out how this tool works is you push down on the red handle and it compresses the valve spring you've got the valve in the center you've got two keepers those are the little half circle pieces and then you've got the retainer which is the disc on top of the spring so to remove the keepers you're simply just going to press down on the tool The, the uh, rope will stop the valve from hitting the piston and the keepers just come out. What you're doing is you're pushing down on the valve. The valve is gonna hit the rope that's inside the cylinders. When the valve hits the rope, it will stay in place, but the tool will keep pushing on the retainer. Eventually your keepers will fall out and you just kind of have to push them off to the side and then the whole uh, the whole system is loose. So it's a little hard to understand, but you know, once you get in there and you see all the parts in person, it's gonna make perfect sense. You can see the valve stem sealed down in there with the spring on it. So just carefully reach in with your valve stem seal pliers or needle nose pliers if you live dangerously. Give it a twist so it's freed up. Now your valve stem seals probably or hopefully came with a little installation tool. This goes over the stem of the valve to protect the seal when it slides over the groove that's cut for the keepers. You could definitely use like a party straw if you don't have one of these. Put a little bit of oil on the seal. Get it started over the straw and take a socket, 10 mil, 11 mil, something that fits over that seal perfectly. Push it down, give it a little twist and a push. You'll feel it click into place. Now once the new seal is on and the spring is back in, getting the retainer and the keepers back in is unarguably the most difficult part of the job. I start by putting the keepers into the retainer. Just drop that right on top of the spring. Now you've got to compress the spring, get the keepers into place, and let the tool go slowly, and the keepers locked onto the valve will keep the retainer in place. Now watch as I compress the tool, you'll see the valve come through, the keepers want to fall right out of place. Now the tool's all the way compressed and you've got to get some kind of little pick or tool or small flathead in there to get those keepers into place before you can release the tool. If anybody can do it, Car Passion can do it and if Car Passion can do it, you guys can do it. Honestly, the most frustrating part is it can take 20 seconds to get one back in or it can take two hours so that one seriously took me 30 minutes I'm hoping I'm gonna get a little bit quicker as I go along here but all right we're on number eight here I'm definitely getting faster one thing that's super important is making sure the cylinder is as full of the rope as possible you don't want that valve to be able to travel downwards when you're actuating the tool I'm getting ready to get these keepers back into place and another little trick that I figured out is I'll put my finger over the top of the keepers, actuate the tool, and I can hold them in place with my finger just right to where they'll fall into that little groove on the valve. This is my karma for not telling you guys in the very beginning of the video that the valve keepers 
if you're not careful, will fly into orbit and you will never find them. So I lost a valve keeper. Here we are six days later, how to get the new keepers in the mail to continue the job. And this is why we don't have a video this week. And this is, <sighs> the struggle is real. I wanna give a massive thanks to Miata Roadster. Not only did they get these keepers out to me in just a couple days, but Bill was nice enough to toss them in the mail for free for me. So thanks Bill at Miata Roadster. Make sure you check out their site. Also the makers of the world's best shifter, which you've seen in a couple of my previous videos. I even got two in case I do it again. Once you've got all 16 seals in place and all the lifters are back in, it's time to reassemble it in the same manner you took it apart. Now I know that's a little bit more difficult because you have to set up the timing belt, but lucky for you, I've already done that two times on my channel. I'll link both of those videos uh, in, that, in that page on my website that you'll find down below. But there is one thing I wanna cover really quick that I still get messages about people missing when they put the cams back in their car. Okay, so check this out. You just did your first timing belt job, super proud. You go to drop your cam back in, right? Now take a look here, there's only one nub on the front of this cam. And on the gear, there's three slots, or that slot goes three ways. You can put this cam gear on like this, you can put it on like this, or you can put it on like this. There's only one correct way to put it on. So what a lot of people do is they put the cam gear back on with the wrong orientation. They set the timing belt up correctly, but the cam and the gear are not lined up and their car won't start afterwards. So that's something very important to pay attention to. All you have to realize is on the exhaust cam, the nub is always going to face the E on the cam gear. So it goes on like that. So again, the E lines up with the nub, or if you put your cam in at top dead center, you know that E is gonna be vertical. And one more little thing I like to do is, before I put the cams back in, paint all the journals and lifters with a little bit of oil. That way on that first initial startup, you're not uh, going in dry. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys in a little bit when I get this thing all assembled. Okay, the car's been sitting now for about three weeks and it's still on E85, so I don't expect it to start up very easily, but let's see what happens. Just gave myself a heart attack. Forgot to plug in the oil pressure sensor, so it showed no oil pressure. I was like, how could I have messed up something involving oil pressure with the cams? Whew. Okay, we're back on.
All right, guys, well, that is all I have for you on valve stem seals. Of course, everything I talked about in this video will be in the link down below, including a video by GQM Garage Show. Uh, Quinn did a video doing the same exact job on a Miata. His method is a little bit different from mine, so if you're tackling this job yourself, it's probably a video you want to check out as well. And now that the car's running, hopefully I can get some more videos out to you guys. We got lots of fun stuff coming in. That five speed is not staying in there for long because I'm ready to turn the boost back up and I'm coming for TJ's BRZ. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.